Gilbert King is the 2013 Dayton Literary Peace Prize runner-up in nonfiction for Devil in the Grove, Thurgood Marshall, The Groveland Boys, and The Dawn of a New America, a New York Times bestseller. The book also won the Pulitzer Prize in 2013. He has also written for the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Pacific Standard. King lives in New York City with his wife, two daughters, and a French bulldog whose name, I hope, is Louis. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Gilbert King. That was lovely. Thank you very much. As always, it's an honor to be here. Sharon, Mark, the entire Dayton community, thank you very much. You really are the people that we want to surround ourselves with. And you've really become like a family to many of us. We talk about this a lot. So I just want to extend my heartfelt thanks for having me back yet again. Thank you very much. Um, I think, you know, this weekend we hear a lot about the importance of literature and how, through storytelling, we writers are using our gifts to advance the cause of peace, justice, and equality. And it's all true. But may I also admit to a tiny feeling of inadequacy to be sharing this stage with the likes of Gloria Steinem, and Brian Stevenson, who are using their great gifts as storytellers to advance the cause of peace, justice, and equality and oh yeah, one other thing, actually advancing the cause of peace, justice, and equality through their actual work. Uh, we writers have to respect people with real jobs, so. Let me say a few words about Jeff Hobbs and the short, tragic life of Robert Peace. There are some books that come into my life and they sit on my table or nightstand for a few days or a week. Their titles give me pause. I have an idea that I may be, what I may be in for, and I circle them warily. The short and tragic life of Robert Peace. You should be a little scared. You may be about to experience feelings of great intensity, and there's a chance, a good chance, that it may not end well. You may end up having your heart broken, and you might wonder whether the commitment will be worth it. You could say the same thing about love. The short and tragic life of Robert Peace. I haven't talked to Jeff about what must have been an excruciating moment in his life and the lives of his friends. I would imagine this work left him raw and exposed and deeply pained. I'll bet he questioned the amount of time he was spending and whether he could do justice to the story of his friend. But I do know that if it weren't for Jeff Hobbs, the story of Robert Peace might well be remembered in a superficial and hopefully wholly unsatisfying way. A story of tragedy, of talent and opportunities squandered of an incomprehensible death. Instead, in Jeff's gifted hands, we get a story of love, beautiful, maddening, funny, complicated, hopeful, messy, heartbreaking. A story of friendship, class, race, parental love, Dreams fulfilled, dreams turned to dust. In other words, a story of life, of life. It's right there in the title. You just have to look for it. There are very few stories that have touched me as deeply as this one. Robert Peace has stayed with me long after I finished reading about his short and tragic life. As a parent, as a son, as a husband, as a citizen of this world that we share, I learned something about my own heart. It's actually a muscle. 
And if you allow it to break a little, it becomes stronger, leaving in it more room for love. The experience of reading Jeff's book reminded me of the words of Thurgood Marshall, written in his famous opinion in Furman versus Georgia, which struck down capital punishment in 1972. Marshall wrote, in recognizing the humanity of our fellow beings, we pay ourselves the highest tribute. Jeff, that's what you've done with your book. On behalf of the Dayton Literary Peace Prize, thank you for sharing with us the short and tragic life of Robert Peace. Thank, thank you, Th thank you, Gilbert, Sharon, uh, Mr. Clooney, uh, all of you uh, for for being here. You you all know what an honor this is, uh, and with the Bengals at an unlikely seven and zero, uh, <laughs> even better. Uh, no, it's, it's it's nice, and I'm grateful. And, and Mr. Stevenson, uh, uh, man, just oh man. Your your book, your your work, and your life, as as Gilbert said, I, I sit in my garage talking to my dog most of the time, and you do what you do, and it is a privilege to be here with you, and a privilege to speak to all of you uh, for for a couple minutes about Rob Peace. He would be, uh, I think, he'd get a real kick out of this. Uh, uh, the, the demographics and the cause and, and everything. Um, I don't want to get too cutesy with his name, Peace, uh, but suffice to say his name meant a lot to him. He, he used to doodle little peace signs in, in the vowels, uh, A and E and O in his first name. Uh, it was his mother's name. It was a connection to her uh, and to his family who, who had owned their home in Orange, New Jersey before it became nicknamed Ill Town. Uh, two, three generations before redlining, before the construction of freeways, before the decline of manufacturing, before riots and, and racism did the things that they do to neighborhoods, uh, as, as almost everyone I spoke to who, who grew up there with him said at some point, it wasn't Disneyland, but it was home, and, and Rob was very attached to his home. Uh, I, I, I visited a, a school called Hampton University, a historically black university in Virginia, and a young man stood up. Uh, he looked very serious. Uh, little upset maybe, and, and he asked me, well, what's the point of this? Uh, what, what's the message? He said, how can you stand up there and tell me there's a positive message in the story of, of this man who uh, overcame a lot but was born with a lot of gifts and was given a lot of gifts and died because he, he died in a chaos of violence because he, he sold marijuana. What's the point? Uh, and uh, over the, the last year or so, I've gotten to visit a lot of schools uh, from Ivy League universities to juvenile halls and, and just about every space in between. And students approach and respond to this book in, in different ways, predictable and unpredictable, uh, according to the community uh, circumstances they come from. Uh, but I would say the, the commonality across all students is that there is something about Rob Peace's story that compels or empowers young people to share their own stories in the form of a question or a response to a classmate's question or just a standalone testimony. Uh, and it is, as, as a lot of you I've met a number of teachers. Uh, as you all know, it is astonishing to witness 
people, especially young people, especially young men, uh, assume the vulnerability required to stand up and, and say, this is my story, tell me yours. It is astonishing and not that surprising. Uh, this was one of Rob Peace's great gifts, uh, being curious, drawing people out, making people feel safe and unjudged. He was a teacher himself. Uh, to the young man at, at Hampton, I, I stammered for, for a minute. I, I was a little uncomfortable. One thing I've learned over this year is that it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's necessary even. Uh, I told him an anecdote about, about a friend of Rob's who, who also from Newark and struggled ultimately, you know, got organized and he now counsels traumatized teenagers in, in the South Bronx. And the reason he does that important work is because he was friends with Rob. It's not just our own circumstances, struggles, stresses, baggage. Uh, it, it is, uh, it, it, it's how we impact others whose paths we cross. We, we all don't experience each moment the same way, and, and it is messy being a person. Uh, I, I think he, he heard me pretty, pretty good, and, and later he shared that as a young kid in North Philadelphia, a policeman, wrong time, wrong place thing, put a gun in his face and told him he was gonna end his life. Uh, that was his perspective. Uh, I told him that uh, the first time I sat down with Jackie Peace, Rob's mom, to talk about telling the story of his life and not just his death, uh, she said that her only consolation after losing her only child was that she knew he had influenced a lot of people for the better. Um, and it's, it's nice to think he continues to do so thanks to communities like this one. Uh, I, I was I was in Newark on Friday, uh, two days ago, uh, at the house and talking to Jackie about this uh, uh, th this notice, and she said that's nice. That's really really nice. Those were her words, and uh, I'll leave you with that. Uh, thank you so much.